because some people ask for this to be in English. If you have any questions, I have about 10-15 minutes after the talk uh, before I need to run off to catch a train. I will try to keep you awake after lunch. Um, I'm the Chief Technical Officer at SIS11, uh, which is a managed services and service management company based out of Berlin. Um, my job is to make sure that the future of the company aligns with uh, technological opportunities. And uh, we are currently finalizing our OpenStack-based SIS11 stack uh, that we are planning to use for our managed hosting business and for other new business opportunities that we got from uh, implementing OpenStack. We did exactly what uh, Mr. Schröer from Metro said. We use vanilla OpenStack and we did a real deep dive to really figure out what goes on in OpenStack. We have an obligation to our clients because we are running a public cloud and we need to make sure that rights management really works. And last year we spent about six weeks on that and I'll talk about a couple things that we found. So, as I said, OpenStack empowers our customers to do proper self-service. That can only be the case if they can trust that no other customer can access their stuff. Also, companies will be our customers and they have hierarchies. They have bosses, they have system administrators, they have interns, and we don't want interns to delete any virtual machines. So, first of all, we need to figure out who people are. Luckily, there is Keystone for that, which is um, the identity and access management component from OpenStack. And we have a two-layered system. Again, we have users and we have projects. Maybe tenants, maybe projects. I don't know. What's the latest? Tenant, project, who knows? Project. Great, I think we talk about projects in this presentation. <laughs> so if, if we have a user, um, that user can have different roles in different projects, which is pretty nice, but we also need to make sure that the user authenticates themselves, and they do that against Keystone. They ask for a token. So they send their password, they send their username, and they say which tenant or project they want to get a token for. And then Keystone, if it likes the password or whatever authentication scheme you use, gives you back a token that you can use uh, to authenticate yourself against a service. For example, if you want to create a network from Nova, um, you send that token with your create network request. And then we get to the next step. We already know that you are the person that you claim you are because you have the password. Nobody ever took it off a sticky note. So well, we need to authorize you or we need to make sure, check whether the token is valid and whether it actually allows you to do what you want to do. So there are different ways. Either you go back to Keystone and ask Keystone, hey, is this token valid and is it all okay? Or if you use Fernet tokens, the checksum is calculated and you know whether it's valid yourself. In the end, the token will be valid. That's fantastic. And you have the right role. So yes, Nova gives you your created instance and everybody is happy. That's wonderful. And all this is because of the OpenStack policy engine. That's basically a uh, standard library that was introduced a little while ago. It can be used by all OpenStack services. And usually what you have is a JSON file for every service. And you have rules, and rules have conditions. So that's the general syntax. On the left side, you have the name of the rule. On the right side, you have the conditions for the rules. Typically, the rule name is some action of OpenStack, but you can also uh, create aliases. So if you have a right side that you repeat often, you can give it another name. For example, uh, there's a rule called app and required. 
And if the rule is called admin required, you actually have to have the rule admin uh, as Keystone tells you. So, and there's the other thing, uh, you want to do something, and for that, a rule is applied. For example, if you want to create compute uh, resources, you have to satisfy the rule admin or operator. And the rule admin or operator is a combination you need to be uh, satisfying either the rule admin required or you have to have the role owner. So you can build complex combinations and you can like go through all that. And it's very nice for all the operations that you can control with this. You just go through the source code of all OpenStack components that you want to write stuff for, and then everything is awesome. Great? Great. But uh, one thing you need to know, there are objects and non-objects. Objects is everything that already exists in the OpenStack context. So an existing virtual machine, an existing virtual network, or a virtual listing. And there are non-objects. For example, a list of all your virtual machines is not an object. It's a list of objects. And if you want to figure out whether you can create a new virtual machine, no object to test against is there yet, but just an action. So who knows whether this is an object or a non-object? Anyone? I don't know either. So I would need to go back and check the source code. And that is one of the bigger problems in building your own policies. There are more than 1,200 operations that exist, and you would need to check when you change the role uh, assignments from the OpenStack default. The official documentation for Oslo policy strongly disincentivizes people from doing that because they say anything could happen. We tried, and yes, anything can happen because most of the 1,200 unavailable API operations are undocumented. I don't want to say they are undocumented because that would be mean. Because you can always use the source, right? It's completely easy, no problem. Just go there, read, I don't know, 480 lines of Python. And we did that. And all OpenStack components use Oslo policy, so great standards. But they also use additional non-Oslo policy checks that are hard-coded. For example, list operations. If you want to list all your VMs, you actually have hard-coded roles that are used to filter the result of all VMs that are in uh, your OpenStack instance. And you have something like this, context is admin, that is a rule that you will find in, I think, every single policy JSON file of all OpenStack components. Every single service has this hard-coded somewhere in the source code. So yes, you can delete this, but then your OpenStack is going to break in fun ways and you will have interesting fireworks on Horizon Dashboard, for example. Horizon Dashboard also uses Oslo policy. It also decides most of the time which elements of the UI to show you. And sometimes you click on something and then you get the answer back, no, you weren't allowed to do that. What has happened? Your policy JSON for a service that Horizon uses is not in sync with your services one because they're using different files. They run on different machines. The Horizon dashboard machine quite probably cannot even access the original policy JSON file for the service, and you have to build a process to make sure that all the rules and all your role assignments and everything is always in sync. So that's nice. You can do that. But Horizon also has its own policies that you need to set to hide or show certain things that have nothing to do with the functions of the uh, service. So you cannot just take a services policy JSON and put it in place for Horizon to use. You actually have to combine and merge the two. And if you're lucky, there are no conflicts. Who knows what the admin role does? Everything. Yes. That's great. 
The problem with the admin role is that it violates tenant isolation promises because a check on the admin role is hard-coded in some parts of some of the OpenStack services for historical reasons, because in the past we didn't have Oslo policy, so you had to have hard-coded checks. And if you go to the various bug trackers, etc., you actually see patches that have been dropped because not enough people agreed that it's a good idea to drop these hard-coded admin checks. If you use the is admin flag in any OpenStack service, you're using the admin role and you're breaking Oslo policy and you're giving people that try to run a public cloud a hard time. So don't do that. OpenStack lands. OpenStack lands is OpenStack's image store. No problem, right? Nobody uses images. No problem if the wrong person gets the wrong image, except you might lose important company information. And Lance has two API versions, version one and version two, and I think even as of Mitaka, version one is still not completely gone. But version one only partially implements Oslo policy. And if you try to give people the choice between both APIs, you have to maintain a separate patch that is over two years old. No, it's actually two years old in three weeks. Uh, so it's too early to say happy birthday to that bug that would fix Glenn's, uh API version 1 to not break with the combined Oslo policy for both version 1 and version 2. Uh, so your choice is either patch Glenn's or disable one of the two versions, but the end result is OpenStack Glenn's breaks API versioning by using policy JSON. So if you do that, go back and check the bug tracker, it's fun. So, the button line. I'm really quick today, but I won't apologize for that. That gives you more question time to torture me with. If you really want to run OpenStack, especially as a public cloud with multi-tenancy, where you have people that might be enemies or at least competitors running in the same cloud, make sure that you really understand Oslo policy and that you really understand the default policy that's in implemented. If you do not do that, that's negligence. Write your own rule sets for policy JSON and also take your time to test them. If you do this and you run Tempest, it will break in fun ways unless you make sure that all the roles are in place and that some of the checks are um, some of the checks are modified so that they reflect your idea of who should be able to do what. If you have aliases, like the context is admin thing, put them on the top of your policy JSON file and then only refer to these because the parsing order of policy JSON files also is somewhat underdocumented and that's, yeah, today it's funny. It wasn't funny when we figured it out. Um, so what we did was we have operator and member roles for people that need read-write access and people that need read-only access. Oh, yeah. Um, I like to repeat this because it's important. Never give the admin role to normal users. Normal users is everybody that is not in a situation to begin with to do anything with your stack. Just don't. It works unless they do only all the things that they're supposed to do, with one slip of the fingers, one mistyped UUID, and you will never figure out why admin deleted someone's VM. So, yeah, and patched lands to properly support the policy enforcement in version one. And that was 14 minutes, and we are at questions. No, no questions. questions. Question in the back. Did you do us a favor and improve the documentation? Sorry, come again? Did you do us a favor and improve the documentation? Um, <laughs> so, 
In theory, yes. In practice, we do what OpenStack asks and don't tell people that you can change the policy JSON files. That's what they say in a big red warning box. We actually checked and tried to find people that did that. The only ones that admitted to it in public was CERN on their blog, which helped us find out some of the things. Uh, we have not done a good job so far of contributing back upstream, that is true. Um, I promise we try to do better in the future. More questions? Yes. All of them. So we took three people six weeks to go through uh, the whole OpenStack source code to find out everywhere where we found something that looked like role enforcement or policy enforcement and analyzed it. Because just because there is a standard a library for something doesn't mean that every service uses it the same way. So yes, we checked them all, we hope. And we did it again now for Mitaka, so, and we didn't find any significant improvement. Yes. Did you have to add lots of new roles, or were you quite happy with the structure in general? We didn't have to add a lot of roles, but we had to change about everything, because for our for our business, we have internal administrators that need to be able uh, to work for any client at night, and we have clients that want to do stuff for themselves. So we have to have admins in the OpenStack sense that can do anything, and we have to have operators in a tenant that can do within the tenant whatever they should do. And then we need to have people that can only work, for example, in the development uh, instances of a given client. So uh, we are far away from what you get uh, when you start out with OpenStack proper. Oh, by the way, I forgot this. Um, we looked into domains. If your domain isn't default, OpenStack breaks. So, Or is there anyone here? So. On top of users and projects, there are domains, and those would be nice. But apparently, nobody ever uses used that anywhere either because it doesn't work. Also, no significant change between Kilo and Mitaka. More questions? So what's, what's your recommendation for a simple solution for a private cloud? A simple solution for a private yeah, cloud. When we don't have uh, tons of people to look into. If you have a weeks. private cloud, you don't have a lot of these problems because in a private cloud, you mean like company internal, you usually have people that cooperate, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, I'm an optimist. We, we have IT security and compliance people as well. Yes. So. Um, <laughs> Try to not give anybody the admin role unless they explicitly need the ability to change anything and everything at any time. And that means, yes, you need to go back and check whether things work. Um, we are also a bakery and we do um, internet stuff to the side and we are hiring. So um, if you like cake, we don't offer just interesting insights into the dark, seedy underbelly of OpenStack. We also offer sweets. OK, with that, thanks. If you have any more questions, I'll linger around a little bit. And uh, have a nice day. Enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>